Welcome back to D20 Tactics. On this channel I play Dungeons and Dragons with my friends and we explore combat scenarios and play out the tactics used to defeat monsters quickly and safely, giving you more time to get back to roleplaying. I'm your host and Dungeon Master, Sarson Zero, and today I'm joined by Blind Oracle, Azure Wolf, Longfish, and Fear No Equal. Together we'll run through typical battles that adventurers might see playing Dungeons and Dragons. This is the sixth and final encounter clearing out a diabolical cult, so if you missed the start you can find a link to it in the description below. Grab your dice, draw your sword, and let's jump into combat. Hit points, abilities, spells, items in hand. 109 hit point. In hand is my Wand of the War Mage plus one. Wand of Magic Missiles, two slots remaining. Four first level, three third, three second, one third, two fourth, two fifth. 132 out of 134, holding a plus one short bow. Eight minutes on boots of speed remaining. A 125 out of 126, holding the Staff of Python and shield plus one. Four level one. 3 level 3 and 2 level 4 spell slots remaining and both charges of my channel divinity. And the warning bond is up between the fighter and I. 159 out of 159, AC is 20 due to warding bond. I have second wind and indomitable still available. I have a great axe plus 2 in hand. Monsters, abilities, items, and numbers. Monster, Arcanoloth. And Arcanoloth is a mercenary spellcaster of the lower planes. That's what has been summoned here by the sacrifice of unknown number of souls. What is an Arcanoloth exactly? Well, I'm glad you asked. An Arcanoloth has resistance to cold fire and lightning. It has resistance to non-magical weapons. They're immune to acid. They're immune to poison. They're immune to the charm condition and the poison condition. They have true sight of 120 and a passive perception of 17. Still not good enough for a rogue. They have innate spell casting, so they can, as many times as they like, cast Ultra Self, Darkness, Heat Metal, Invisibility on themselves only, or or magic missile. They have magic resistance against any of the saves that they're going to have to take in this fight. Their weapons count as magical. They also have regular spell casting in addition to their innate spell casting. So they have a bunch of cantrips, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth level slots. Their eighth level slot is mind blank. So this has already cast a mind blank on itself and is benefiting from that spell. What is mind blank? Well, I'm glad you asked. Until the spell ends, which happens after 24 hours, a willing creature, which is the Arcanoloth, is immune to psychic damage. Any effect that would sense its emotions or read its thoughts, any divination spells, and the charm condition, it's all immune to that. The Arcanoloth can teleport as an action. It has claws that do poison damage. How do we all feel about poison damage? Like Hero's Feast is the best investment ever. Poison me, mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's an Arcanoloth. What else we got? Terrain and effects. The terrain is quite simple. There's a couple of pieces of difficult terrain. They might look familiar. A couple of stairs upward. Some impassable terrain forming walls. Pillars that go up to the ceiling here. And a pool of blood, but it's only like ankle deep. So there's no difficult terrain or anything like that. Tactics. What do you guys think for tactics in this fight? Who wants haste? I still think you throw it on the fighter. I actually am not sure about that in this case. Because he's got teleport. Mm. I'm probably not going to be able to stay in contact reliably. You are. Ah, okay. I'll take it. So if you stay in a stairwell and ready to shoot him when he teleports, then you can potentially stay in better contact. My thought with the hasting and the hold action is if he's teleporting, I can reliably get sneak attack on the first attack. Off turn, he's going to teleport. I'm going to be visible to it. I'm never going to get the big bonus damage on that second attack. Yeah, unless he teleports into somebody. Well, the other thing we could do is put one tank in one room and one tank in the other room and stick you and the, the wizard in a stairwell. An air elemental would be helpful here, especially if we're going to split up. So I'm probably going to crack that open. I don't think banishment's going to be worth it on this one. God, it would be funny, though. Yeah, it would. Just ruin Saracen's day. I think you should. I'm going to try it, but it's remembering the conditions he's immune to charm. So hypnotic pattern and polymorph are useless. And polymorph no real better than banishment in this regard. Cleric, you want uh, down or up? I think you should take up so that you can spirit guardians and engage with him more consistently. Yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and roll initiative. That was a good try, buddy. <laughs> Anybody have higher than a 20? The rogue has a 21. I have exactly 20. Who's got between a 20 and a 15? 17 minus 1 on the clerk. Who's got between a 15 and a 10? Who's got between a 10 and a 5? 6 on the owl. I got a 6 as well. 6 on the fighter. All right, rogue. 21, you're up first. First things first, this is a little tougher than I thought it would be. Let's go ahead and click the heels on the boots. Move straight into the alcove. What else? Standard action to hide. 
After that, we're going to go to the wizard. I need to be 30 feet from the road to haste him. Or to haste him. Cool. And then the remainder of my movement is getting to the southeast stairwell. After that, we're going to go to the cleric. Move me to the north of the northeast stairwell. Can I see that guy? Yeah, you got line of sight to him. All right, I will chug a banishment at him. <laughs> the cleric's trying it. What's the range on counterspell? 60 feet. Insight. Hit that with a fourth level counter spell. All right, that cancels out. And turn. After that, we go to the owl. Move him east of me one. Dodge. The Arcanaloth is going to cast Chain Lightning at the Cleric. Give me a DC 17 dexterity save. That's an 18. 54. So you saved. So you're going to take... 27 points of lightning damage. And it's about to hurt. It's going to jump to anything within 30 feet. Fighter, go ahead and give me a DC 17 deck save. Rerolling with Indomitable. Oh, you used it. I failed on that one as well. 54, of which you're going to take 27. Cleric, take another 27. And Rogue, give me a DC 17 dexterity save. Vantage on this from haste. It's a 27 to save. And then you're going to take... Well, I'm going to try to issue to you 27 points of damage. And I'm going to say nope. You ignore it with evasion. Dodge that lightning. <laughs> After that, we're going to retreat. I'm going to fly for 30 feet. I'm going to fly to there. After the Arcanaloth, we're going to go to the fear. Move me east. I'm going to crack open that gem. Slam that thing like a pog slammer. Nice reference. Now these kids stand up. <laughs> God, I feel so old. Honestly, I thought we were going to make a Pal World reference. <laughs> That's too young. <laughs> What happens for initiative for the elemental? 15. That'll do for me. After that, we're going to go to the blind oracle, top of the order. I now need to ask how much move speed I had, because the boots are going and I'm hasted. Are we doubling a double? Yeah, sounds good to me. So I now have 100 feet of move speed. First thing we're going to do is bonus action hide. Then we're going to go five squares south. Yep, right where you just had the cursor. One more on the diagonal. And then take the shot at our fox friend there. 26 to hit. 26 will do it. For 35 points of damage retreat to the there's good haste action you can use the haste action to hide so i am going to do that Age wolf trying to get on the stairwell to where i could first see him he's got three quarter cover from there that works this is about to become a wizard's duel probably you ignore half cover when making a spell attack you're not gonna ignore his cover that's perfectly fine magic missile what level four he's gonna throw up a shield i will counter the shield okay so he's gonna take four levels of magic missile i'm staring at three looking at three three plus one is four four plus five is nine nine times six is 54 go boom all right i'm good where i'm the longfish move me up to the staircase again so i can see him and i am going to throw a guiding bolt at him level four Whew. 18 to hit 18 connects 23 damage. Lethal. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. I only have 100 something hit points. Okay, Arrow Elemental, you can go. Thank you. There's a lot of consumable use there for. Uh... I'd rather be over prepared than under prepared. No, 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 hey. Clearing out the Diabolical Cult Temple, the adventurers find a shield plus two, a wand of the War Mage plus two, a potion of flying and a potion of cloud giant strength. They also get loot worth 42,000 gold, which comes out to 10,500 gold each. The distribution will be shield goes to the cleric, wand goes to the wizard, potion of flying goes to the rogue, and the potion of cloud giant strength goes to the fighter. Of course, that can be rearranged if you guys want it. For once, your distribution seems reasonable. You mean the fighter doesn't want the wand? <laughs> <laughs> I know how badly you've wanted to dual wield once the War Mage. The next adventure is fighting off the enemies that surround a white dragon tundra. Oh boy! The adventurers will make their way up into the frozen north and see what they have to fight there. The adventurers have cleared out the diabolical cult, so that's the final encounter in this dungeon. The players will now level up to level 13 and move on to the next dungeon. Next week, I'll release a video with all six encounters from the diabolical cult, and we'll talk about the particular challenges of the different encounters. Thank you for stopping by. I'm Sarson Zero, and I will see you next time.